Hello, this is an assessment of a Steinway upright piano made in 1924, Model K, that's 130 centimetres high, though it's a bit higher than it should be at the moment, as we'll show in a minute. Um, and it's been restored apparently about 30 years ago. The, the, the polish is French polish, traditional French polish, and is in quite good condition really, just maybe a little bit of touching up here and there, but generally very good. Now it's had replacement key tops, and these have been pretty well done, very even, and uh, except for the front edge on, on them here, when you put these key tops on, there's a, there's a sharp front edge, and if you play octaves, you can find that you can feel that. Um, I can feel it. In my, sorry, I've got some paint on my hand, I've been decorating. Um, I can feel it slightly uh, on the edges there. Then maybe that's not worrying the pianist, but it's something we would normally do, just take off the sharpness on there. Uh, but otherwise, the piano is in... Outward, the cons cosmetics of the piano is, is pretty good. Now I mentioned the piano is taller than it should be. This is, uh, I think, almost nine centimeters from the floor. It should be really seven or less, certainly. And the reason is the casters, the, the, these have been replaced and uh, they're not as low as they should be and therefore the pedals are far too high. This is a Steinway upright that we have in stock. You see much lower casters and therefore the pedals are a lot lower. Actually, the top of the pedal is 10 centimetres from the floor. There's a little bit of cosmetic damage here to sort out too, but as a result, there's very, very worn on the side. Now, pedals do wear, even if they're at the right height. It shows that it's had a lot of use, so maybe a combination of the two. Now, the restoration's been done very well in some aspects. I don't want to make this video too long, so I want to concentrate on the work that I, we think will improve it. Um, and looking at the hammers, they're, they're, they're good quality hammers. When I first looked at them, I thought they were they're possibly Renner hammers, as you'd expect on Steinways very often, Steinway Renner. But I noticed this on the last hammer here. Now, I don't know if any technicians know what that means. I have seen it before, I think, and I just can't remember what it stands for. So if you know what that stands for, uh, it would be wonderful to put me out of my... Ah, oh, sorry about that. I hadn't even noticed. It's an Arbel hammer. Uh, so there we go. And I think that might be Arbel top quality felt. Now I think I remember that. So these are good hammers. They've been impregnated too. Um, Arbel hammers, Steinway very often use Arbel on new pianos as well as Renner. Um, so did Bosendorfer. We looked around the Bosendorfer factory recently and saw plenty of examples of Arbel hammers being used as well as Renner, both top makes. Um, getting back to the piano, well, the, there's not a huge amount of play. There has been used a reasonable amount recently, but there's, I think they just need voicing, perhaps a little bit of refacing and voicing because they're very good quality hammers. Now listening to the tone, the original bass strings, the tuning pins haven't been changed, they're original tuning pins. But the strings are a bit patchy. I don't think they've been replaced at all there. Obviously if they were replaced then they would be much stronger sounding. But I think to get the balance, unless you replace the trebles as well, and the tuning pins are tight. So I think if it was a stock piano we would sell it cheaper rather than replace the, the bass strings which are reasonable. Though of course we could replace them if requested. Because I think if the hammers were voiced, the strings, it would sound better as well. And very even tone throughout. Around here, again just bits of voicing really, and quite good. And good quality hammers. Now the client did mention one issue and that is the weighting of the keys is uneven and it's absolutely true. This is 47.5 grams and uh, so we just put them on, it goes straight down. It, shouldn't, it should just about be beginning to be go down at 47.5, that would be ideal. We're going straight down, uh, if we take 9.5 grams off what happens, so still going down. So it's, uh, let's try another 9.5 off and if we hit the button, so that's incredibly light, it's about 30 grams, uh, which is far too light and makes that, doesn't make it feel right. By the way, I've taken the dampers off, I've got my foot on the pedal, so that takes the dampers off when you, when you try the weighting. Let's try it on another key, and surprisingly, sorry that I should, we have proper weights obviously for doing um, this job normally, um, but this is just an amateur way of doing it. But that's just going down with, just about to go down with 47. Right, and uh, let's have a look at this one. Tapping the bottom, it's just about to go down. Uh, so that's not too bad, but some of them down here, I noticed, 
are not going down even that's even with over 50 grams that's 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 about 10 percent higher than it should be let's try another one that's going down now so it's 10 percent heavier than it should be and one or two of them i discovered uh, even even needed an extra one on top of that so they were up to 70 grams which is so a huge variety in the weighting now that was done with the dampers off but with the dampers on i also noticed that some of the dampers these two are behaving quite well they're going about halfway or even more than halfway to the string hammers are traveling before the damper pulls off but if we look down here we, we find that let's try these two for instance they're pulling off almost immediately and they're heavier springs there as well so there's a huge weight there so not only is the key too heavy um, from the from uh, from the start but also when it catches the damper it's also so in fact actually that's I found I, if I put 80 grams on it still wouldn't go down when the damper was on the string so that's far too heavy and unpleasant to play and very uneven so that definitely needs doing I say many aspects have been done well the key the key dip is about nine, 11 millimeters which I like very much but you'll notice that there's some sideways play um, so this cricket bat as we call it, needs turning to take up the sideways play. Those, those are newish felts, uh, well, put in in 1980, presumably. Um, and uh, so there's plenty of wear on those, but they're, they're wearing in the middle there. And they need, the cricket bat needs turning so that they wear at a different point. If that doesn't work, then the felt needs replacing. But that, I don't think that's going to be what's necessary. So that's a very brief assessment of a Stime Model K upright piano made in 1924. And uh, I've just concentrated on the aspects that really need doing. Much of the work's been done well on this piano. But I think the aspects we, we, we pull, well, the key tops, they, there's a slight um, roughness at the edge here, which needs taking. That's always the case with new plastic key tops. And uh, that's an easy job to do, just filing them down slightly. And then the weighting of the keys was the other most no notable thing. The, the, there's a huge unevenness. Um, so the keys need weighting. After new hammers are put on, you do need to weight the keys, and it's obviously not been done here. And there's plenty of space, I think, for weighting them. There's no weights in here at all, so uh, there'll be plenty of space to do that. It's quite a long job to get even, but um, definitely needs doing. And then last of all, the damper regulation uh, is, is very, very varied. And uh, as a result, again, it adds to the heaviness and the tenor area here, which feels extremely heavy. And around here, that feels very light. So you've got a very light middle C here and a very heavy C below it. So playing the octaves, there's a huge difference. And that's my little finger, which is not as powerful as my thumb. So it really is difficult to play evenly and uh, needs definitely needs attention. Oh, and I forgot to mention as well, the, the pedal uh, is far too high and the casters, it needs new casters uh, to, to rectify that. And then, it'll, the whole piano will be much more comfortable to play. The hammer voicing is quite reasonable. A bit of a variety there, but... We're not they're good quality hammers. Very pleasant piano to play. Steinway uprights of this period are, are wonderful upright pianos. We have three in stock at the moment, one of which um, we brought back into stock, that was sold before, a wonderful piano, and then two others, one of them we're restringing, uh, the other one we're, we're changing the hammers on. That nice powerful bass, very powerful. Of course, ideal for a, a reasonably big room. Though you can still play quietly on them, but this one you can't because the weighting is so varied. It's very, very difficult to play quietly and evenly. So I hope that's helpful for whoever's listening. Weighting on keys is so important and uh, it can get neglected sometimes. The hammers are changed and keys are not weighted. So um, you, if you'd like to test the weights of your keys, then get some coins. Um, there should be about 47 grams on on this uh, age of Steinway. On the modern piano, they're usually 50 to 52.
Thank you very much for listening.